All right, so we gather to rank 64 prospects for the 2023 NHL draft. It's been a fun season so far. A lot of tournaments. It feels a lot more, I suppose, normal than, than last season and the one that preceded it. Um, and it starts, of course, with Connor Bedard, uh, which sends me directly towards Mitch, who will tell us just how special and freakish and out of this freaking world this player is. Yeah, I'm running out of ways to describe Connor Bedard at this point, whether you look at his game versus Slovakia, every single game that he's played in the WHL this year. There were so many games at the World Juniors, too, where just like you see a player who is on a different level. I think at the World Juniors in specific, we saw a Bedard who had more skill around him and he took advantage of having that skill around him to a huge, huge effect. I mean, we saw what Connor Bedard at the World Juniors is going to look like in the NHL. I mean, next season, he could very well be a 40 goal scorer, and we don't see too many of those in the first or even second year anymore. Okay, so fine. He has to be in the top 10. Yeah, okay. that's what I'm saying. We, we can that's... agree on that much. Um, can you talk about his growth as a playmaker, though? Because I think that's something that is perhaps not gone appreciated in the public sphere but something that shows up a lot in our reports uh, throughout this season. So Connor Bedard last season was a very like <clears throat> inside driven shooter, which is obviously great. And he had a lot of NHL qualities. I mean, one of the best shooters in the world, probably one of the five, he could be number one at the shot that he uses the most, but with it did come a bit of trade-off as a passer and that's inevitable that's expected but what Connor Bedard said is actually no no I can be the best playmaker in the league too and so what he started doing was playing the game at a at a more variable speed he'd slow down he'd speed up he'd cut back instead of just trying to charge straight ahead before finding a teammate and as a result you see those handling skills that allow him to curl the puck <clears throat> to curl the puck around the fenders and shoot become more and more of a passing tool and now he's probably the best playmaker in the whl to go alongside it you put him in an environment where his teammates are able to take more advantage of those passes like say at the world juniors and he's far and away the best play, the far and away the best playmaker at the tournament so you have a true dual threat score a guy who is an elite shooter a guy who is an elite passer you add in the fact that he does have a lot of physical skills despite his stature you add in the high pace of operation how much this skating has improved in the last two years and i mean he's a generational prospect through and through okay so i feel like that's settled we can leave him at one we can plug that in the board this is where it gets fun. We talk about Adam Fantilli and Leo Carlson. Uh, we don't have Jimmy, but we have David, who doesn't sleep, uh, doesn't do anything but watch tape. Uh, David, can you please kind of walk us through this debate? Because I've watched a lot of Fantilli tape, and I'm leaning Carlson ahead of him, um, quite frankly. But you've seen a lot of both. So so why don't you set the stage for this this debate? Yeah, um, the truth is, I don't really know. <laughs> I think both players have their unique value, honestly. And I've been debating this in my head for the past two weeks. If we go by the World Junior Championship, I think Carlson had a better performance overall. But it's not really the right setting, I think, to evaluate them. He had played more minutes. He was higher in the lineup. And... I think overall, Carlson has a more mature game. Like he, he knows what he is and he knows his, his strengths while Fentilly really tried to do too much with the puck at first in the tournament. He he did that at the U18s as well. Like this is yeah. a pattern within his play. And I saw it through a lot of his tape. And it's one of the things that's kind of cooled me on his game is that he goes superhero mode uh, with every touch. Um, you know, it's, it's hero puck constantly. Um, which I have concerns about the projection. I think you bring a good point. And it's been, it's been a team with Fentilly, it's true. Um, as he becomes more mature and rises in level, I think he's going to learn to play a more conservative game or more, use his teammates more. We've seen a lot of players like this who like go a hero mode and they mostly all figure it out at some point. Maybe they can conserve this tendency a bit in the NHL. Uh, when there's a scoring chance for themselves, they're going to go for it. But when there are better plays, they, they usually learn to use their teammates. So that's not a long-term concern for me. So the issue here is that we have one 
player who's more mature, or who like who knows his game, and the other one who's still figuring it out. But they almost have equal potential in my mind. And I think we should wait before we put Carson before Fentley. It's perfectly reasonable to do it. And I think they were so close before a tournament that just this tournament could make them flip. But I don't think Fentley really showed his full game. Uh, so I would keep him like we had at the first board and have Fentley first and Leo Carson second. Uh, the main strengths of Fentley is really he's a power forward who also has a playmaking ability. It's true that he tends to attack in, in straight lines and really go for it all the time. But he flashes everything like he has those anticipation sequences where on the power play he's going to move one pass away and by that i mean that maybe his defender gets the puck his defenseman at the point gets the puck he passes it to how to the half wall on the other side of the ice and Fentley is already in position for the next pass so he really he's capable of anticipating the game i think his hockey sense is almost as good as Leo Carlson. it's just that his decision making the result of hockey sense is not as good right now see i don't i don't agree on that like he he fades away for entire periods you know with with fantilly like you just you lose track of him because when the hero puck isn't working he vanishes um and and that's something that i don't see with leo carlson now lassie director of bureau of scouting uh, you have Carlson at two. What do you what do you make of this debate? Because clearly you've seen a lot of, of both players. Yeah, I'm, I'm a really, really big fan of Carlson, of course. He's just a really, really good handler, really good playmaker, really great at taking taking the puck from the boards to the middle, strong physical skills. I mean, he could use the thread of the shot more often, I feel like despite his shot is not on the same level with someone like Michko or the scoring ability in general. But I feel like he does have a good enough shot that he could use it more often or at least use the threat of the shot more often. Uh, and that would even improve his playmaking further. And I mean, the skating continues to improve. It, you know, I think it, it's at least average projection at this point that I, I feel like and it just really has a high likelihood of becoming at least top six maybe top line center or at least a winger i think i still think he's he's better suited to play center in the future and i think whichever team drafts him will probably do think the same joey do you have a perspective you can add as someone who watched him in his D minus one, um, but but where do you come at from from this angle? I mean, last year he was a guy who could pretty much, as as we all know, could do more or less whatever he wanted. Um, the strength was such an asset. Like I'd say, probably uh, above average skating mechanics, and and like I think he just with him, it, it was kind of like to me what David said, like a power forward with some with some high end playmaking ability, uh, like kind of small, like small forward, forward handling ability in such a big frame. So he's got the best of both worlds, being able to protect on the wall and spin out of checks, but also like being able to thread a pass in a small zone, uh, in a small area. So in the USHL, you always see like kind of usually one or the other. And he was just like this nice blend of both. Daniel, you've seen a lot of tape. What, what's your say on this? Because I feel like I've seen your reports on both players. I've watched uh, Carlson more like a lot more and I, I have to catch up on Fantilli, but like Carlson's off puck game is just wild. Like he, he's a proactive mover. Mm -hmm. um, he's always supporting the pass. He blends like puck protection to like create like long, you know, wear down sustained sequences. Like I think back to like the quarterfinal game against Finland where he had two goals and it was just like, he's just a monster on the one shift that kick started. Uh, Sweden's uh, Sweden's kind of comeback or whatever. Um, like, you know, it's just it's just like the the off puck movement is just like uh, second to none that I've seen in this draft. So, Mitch, how do we how do we settle this debate? Well, I think the answer lies in what Fantilli was last season. His playmaking has taken a huge step since last season. His play selection has taken a huge step since last season. It still has a long way to go, and we also, but we also can't underestimate the value of playing in Brandon Arato's Michigan Wolverines team. Like 
that structure is incredible. The way that they're managed, the way that they're coached is going to lead to everyone improving. I mean, just look at they, I mean, Ethan Edwards would be like a legit number one defenseman on most NCAA teams now, just because I've of how good he's this. been. Like he's improved a staggering amount. Everyone who goes to that program just gets way better. I mean, there are guys who are checkers in the USHL who go there and they're legit NCAA caliber guys who can like score and stuff. So yeah, I mean, I think he's going to get a lot better. He's improved so much. And I think the tools are just a hair better than Carlson's, at least based on what I've seen right now, just a hair better. And for me, that's the way I'd go. Let's do it. It pains me, but we'll do uh, Carlson or sorry, we'll do Fantilli and Carlson and we'll have to get split them. You can always flip them next time. Just need a bit more time to figure them. Damn straight. Out. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> uh, I think that this discussion really leads to Madve Mishka because we talked about inefficiency and players who have difficulty with decision making. I mean, that's <laughs> Speaking much of those. Issue with, yeah, with Mishkov. And it's really all about projection because Mishkov does the same thing as Fentili. He doesn't really go through teams with his handling all the time like Fentili tries to do sometimes. But it's mostly about uh, sending passes to no one, uh, sending them to areas where, te where his teammates aren't there. He's a bit overly deceptive. He tries to uh, to veil his play a bit too much, and he doesn't register a position of teammates. And but those things, I think, as he matures, they will go away mostly. And as he plays in more predictable systems with more support, like he's going to learn the more efficient plays because he wants to score. And we have some insane flashes of hockey sense in Mitchkov's game, like mm -hmm. then some lightning, quick processing of defenders, of teammates. He anticipates the flow of the play very well. Um, it's just that at times that fails him. But in the long term, I think all of the, not all of the errors, but most of the errors we see right now are going to go away. And it's because he's so, he anticipates the play, he's aware, he processes fast. So it's only the results right now that are not always good. But as he, uh, gets more repetition experience i think it's going to improve and he has some great off puck timing he's a playmaker almost as good as the top playmakers in this draft he can score with his release he, he's very diverse and his physical game has improved a lot since last year like he's he's, he's a threat on the boards now he can protect mm -hmm. the puck he's very he's very aggressive too so i see progress in his game and his skating is better too he has more speed just from added strength so there's progress and i think we can be confident that the errors are going to go away for me, he's the clear number four. There's really no one else. No debate. Really challenge him. Yeah. No debate. It would be unserious. Uh, we have for to. For me, keep... at least. No, no, that's just the truth. Like he has to stay at four. Cool. Well, that settles that. Um, Joey, this is your time to shine because it's about to get very uh, NTDP uh, heavy. Very. Very NTDP heavy. I just watched them. <laughs> Excuse the... me. Very WHL heavy. I'll have you know. Dude, okay. Okay. That too. Both that places. too. That's that's a good point. It's a date debate between the two. Uh, we had Crystal at five, Benson at six, and then Will Smith. Um, where do we go with five? Uh, Mitch, you Benson. seemed you seemed ready to to spearhead that charge. So I'm going to yield to you um and and you're gonna hate me for this but i think benson should be ahead of of crystal you're gonna be shocked to learn but i am now benson over crystal and i don't see it as a debate great king um king the, we stand okay, so we stand there, russ there, 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 you there are a couple of things yeah i saw i saw russ's board too and i was like there we go that's what i like to see my man but so for so for me the for me benson uh He's not the level of skater that Kristal is. He, but the edges that Benson does have, when you see him, like especially his his lateral movement, is a lot better than I thought it was early in the season. His weight shifts aren't going to fool anyone in the NHL. They don't fool anyone in the WHL. Even when they do, guys just like reach back because he can't really like load his weight fully on one leg and explode across in the same way that other top NHL skaters do. But it won't matter. It won't matter for him. He's a player who anticipates plays two, three, four, five steps in advance. Like we're talking, he dictates the flow of the game. He is the best player on a Winnipeg Ice team that has a ton of NHL talent. He's their best playmaker. He's their biggest scoring threat. Like I think, like I think he only has like 10 points on the power play, too, and he has a million points. Like he's so 
he can just destroy teams at five on five. Of course, it looks a little atypical because it's more quick give and go off puck movement, a quick manipulation here and there, you know, handling, bringing the defender stick across his body, then passing back into the space. And yeah, he's electrifying in a way that I think not a ton of smaller players usually are, but I don't think that's a knock against him anymore just because he's so intelligent. He's so adaptable. He can be the play driver. He can be the complimentary guy. He's, and on top of that, like defensively, his stick is unbelievable. One of the best, and it might be the best in the draft. Uh, the way that he comes back, backtracks, intercepts, uh, a Will lot of Smith players. would give him a run for his money just for posterity. A lot of a lot of players tend to like uh, put their stick flat on the ice or reach forward, and he'll come across the hips and like force them into a bad decision, and then bring the stick to the other side of their body and then poke it away. He just a, a truly next level thinker. Might be the second smartest player in the draft after Bedard, and even then, the debate isn't. There's a debate there to be had for sure. Daniel, I can tell you when I, I interviewed him, he is like interviewing a coach. Like he has like a coach. Not brain. surprised. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds about right. Yeah. Um, Daniel, I don't think I saw the same enthusiasm for Benson out of Cristal, um, which could be you're just being more reserved. Uh, <laughs> but perhaps you have a take on this that we haven't aired. Like, what what are your thoughts on this? Because you've watched a lot of both. You've seen Cristal live. Um, you're someone whose thoughts I want on this debate. Um, tell me what you think. Like Benson's physical, pa- I mean, mental pace is just wild. Like, like he, like, like Mitch said, he's just like three, four steps ahead of everyone. And the game that I watched, like, he forced like probably six or seven turnovers and converted two of them into uh, sc- uh, straight up goals. I think like um, yeah, his activity level and brain should overcome any skating issues. I believe um, like this isn't like a scenario like like Harkins or, or the other, the other Benson from the Oilers Benson, like where he's going to be limited by the stride. It's, he's just too good of a thinker, um, too involved in the play, too deceptive. Um, I I've been up and down on Crystal. Like I've seen him absolutely full teams, like, like just, just in terms of the skill level and, um, the deception off his passes and everything like that. But I've also seen a lot of crystal games where he's painfully inefficient, um, yeah. throwing pucks everywhere. Now, you know, we were learning that maybe that isn't that big of an issue now. Uh, like, it, like he, he does execute at a high level a lot of the time. Um, but, um, you know, Benson's a special player. Crystal's a special player. I, I said last meeting they're really, really close for me, so it doesn't really matter all that much. I think any team that picks either is going to be super happy. Christelle's probably going to drop, like, you know, he's probably going to produce more at the end of the day. But um, I think Benson's a player that you win a lot with. Joey, do you, uh, you know, get to drop in with Will Smith and Oliver Moore? And I know you love Jaden Perron. Um, because I feel like Benson is locked in at five for stall prohibitive favorite for six, but that's not locked in. And, and you have a part to play in this, this debate. What do you think? Should we shove one of those NTDP or Perron? I mean, I know you freaking love the dude. Uh, do we shove one of them into this, this debate? Yeah, you actually, you won't hear me like pushing for Smith <laughs> at, at this spot. I, I've tried to watch a lot of uh, Smith, Leonard, Moore, Perron, because I think that's kind of the the grouping, at least in, in like USHL talent. Um, so with with Smith, I think the, the good is really good, but then the bad is just, it, it's just really frustrating to watch. Um, there are times like when he plays properly, it's, he's a great facilitator. Um, he, he's got lookoffs. He uses his upper body deceptively, moves the puck well, gets the inside, uses different types of passes. Um, but the bad is like he, there are games where he's, he comes in and 
Um, he's determined to do everything himself and he manages the puck really poorly. He exposes it because he thinks he can. And at this level, he doesn't get away with it. Uh, he's not a good enough skater to do anything really with his, with his skating. I don't think he's super explosive. Doesn't create a lot of separation, like with, with his punches or anything like that. Um, so I, I've kind of lately been leaning, I, I think more has been better uh, in kind of my last five or so games that I've watched have kind of leaning more towards more just the, because he, he is that dynamic skater. He, he doesn't use it as well as he can. Um, he is such a great skater. I don't think he employs like change of pace, delays, things like that nearly as much as he should, but I think the potential is really there, but I do think Perron is better than both of them. I, I put Perron first. Uh, I think he's better than that group of NTDP guys. Every game I watch Perron, he's just so he's just, he's so smart and he's so far away uh, ahead of everybody else. Like you just watch him coming through the neutral zone. He builds up speed through a linear crossover. Like he'll he'll bait guys one way with a with a weight shift and he just explodes out the other way. But he's not. It, we talked about being a hero. He's not that at all. Like he's he's so smart. He sees where his like his teammates' roots. He'll throw area passes. He'll throw slips, hooks, um, and and the thing is, like the the strength is a bit of a limitation. But he like he doesn't play on the wall at all. Like he gets the puck and he's and he moves to the inside. Um, and when he plays along the wall, it's because he's just baited a guy inside and he's created space for himself. So he's just so dynamic. He's such a good playmaker and he he operates at such and thinks the game at such a high pace. Uh, I have some concerns about like Smith's processing pace sometimes and the, and how fast his feet move when, when he has the puck. Uh, and I, I just really think Perron's like just a lock to be a stud. I think he's so good. Do we put Perron ahead of Kristal? Do we so boldly make that claim? Um, uh, I don't I have think it's possible, honestly. Yeah, I, I think that's a bit of a stretch because but... I, I really like him. But he, yes, he has limited points in the last ten games. He's five foot eight. Like, I think we have to respect the oh, profile. Oh, man just showed up. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but I as small like... as he is, dude, like, how often do you see him get like, like? I know, but it, in it, zone. It, it, uh, right now, I don't think he has any issues, but he has to improve his skating a bit. And I'm not sure about like it's, if it's really top down. I think everything in his game suggests it is, uh, except the size and the scoring and maybe the, the overall pace. And the he's average slightly uh, above average uh, skater as a projection in the NHL. But at five foot eight, you want more than that. Just I don't. I'm not sure he has everything to really become the player he should be in the NHL. Okay, so let's let's I lock should in be more conservative a bit, just a bit. Let's lock in Benson for stall. Then do we do Perron? Or we do, do we do Dvorsky? Do we do Chalet? Um, do we do <laughs> like what what's the, the next step in, in this debate? I also have liked more and more than more more than Smith. Uh, I love him really <laughs> he's so fast. He's so I'm cool. super ready for that take, but I think it's perfectly reasonable because Smith is very, it's a bit like Crystal. He's very one dimensional. Like Crystal has some other things, but he's mostly a playmaker, a deceptive playmaker, a manipulative playmaker. Crystal has more pace than, and much better skating than Smith. So he belongs ahead. But then you get, you get to Smith and he's really an insane playmaker, one of the best we've seen in the past few drafts. Like he can really anticipate his teammates. He uses the back layers of the attack. But I mean that when you, when he skates through the neutral zone, like he knows where his teammates are behind him and yeah. drops them the puck and it helps create space and he does all of those things. So he's really, really smart, but he has a lot of limitations and like he's, it's really this one ability is going to have to carry his game to the NHL and to a top six, top line role. So I'm, he has more risk and that's always a bit scary in the top 10. So, and, and more, Joyce has just said everything about him. Like he plays a game at insane speed and he also doesn't only rely on his speed, so he's also a playmaker. So he, he, and he's better defensively, and he can win retrievals with his speed. He goes inside. He has a better everything. So he's a more, more well-rounded player and one really elite tool. So Somebody pound the table. Around. What do we I do worry about, seven? like, David, you talk about, like, Smith, uh, like, a big part of his game, like you said, like his spatial awareness, like being able yeah. to attack in layers. 
But I wonder if that goes away at higher levels because he doesn't have that sort of speed. And like, I don't know if, I think he gets a lot of respect in the USHL. And I wonder if like at higher levels, guys yeah. step on him faster. Like he creates space inside the blue line here, but does he do it? I think that's a really good, that's a really good point. Here's one thing I'll say for Smith. I've seen Smith more and Leonard a lot more than anybody else in this draft, practically. Smith, while every, what everybody's saying is true, there still are a couple times in the game where you go, wow, when he gets a goal and you're like, you didn't see it coming. And he is efficient, like you said, as a playmaker. He is. He's really good. And it's hard to find playmakers in this league. I actually, I remember messaging Joey saying, I thought Leonard is actually the best guy for NHL transferable skills mm -hmm. in this whole program. I still think he is, but I'm putting more in Smith ahead of him. Smith because of the playmaking and more because of the speed, but like just, they're just a few spots ahead of him. That's kind of where I stand. I see games sometimes. And I almost wonder, like, I wish like Leonard had the puck more, you know, when you're playing with um, Smith and Perot, like, you're, he, he almost functions more as like the finisher on that line. But when he enters the zone with the puck, it's like, oh my God, like, why isn't this guy kind of a, a more of a facilitator? Look at what Jimmy Snuggerud has become this season, right? Like yeah, he was more, exactly, he was exactly. more of a tertiary guy on his he's line. So and then now he's Minnesota. a play driver and a wrecking That's ball. That's a great point. Yeah. I he was better than Connor Gauthier. Like he was at the yep. World Junior. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so yeah. who do who He was incredible. At, at seven, <laughs> we have to put someone down. <laughs> I'd say, more. Divorce, I'd say more. nobody's talking about him and Dvorsky can play man he's got a pro body he yeah. look I don't I, I think it's hard for a guy like him to shine singularly at, at a, a tournament like the world juniors but he really does look like a player that could play in the NHL he's got all the tools he really so does. how do we feel about this vote Dvorsky or more more or I, I watch Dvorsky. a lot of it yeah all right one at a time one at a time Daniel. I still like Perron more than more though. Okay, I don't know. You like, get a right in you, what you think, but yeah. <laughs> we're also we're you gonna get have Perron top ten no matter what. Joey has done an insane amount of work on Perron. Like, he has a million and five reports on him already. And, and we're we all we all that. unanimously agree that Perron is ridiculous to watch. And yep. of course, he's so slight. His skating, just like Benson, his skating is going to improve more than most players just because of his lack of physical maturity. Okay, fine. Moore is seven. It's settled. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Dvorsky at eight. Seven. No, that's question mark. That's too high. Down a bit. Okay. Smith. Smith at eight. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so what about Ryan Leonard? Oh, I love Leonard. <laughs> Me too. I could talk a half hour. Be somewhere around here. It's really good. Yeah, he's so good. violent. And, and he can it's so rip cool. a puck. He can just yeah. rip a puck. And he's physically strong like Jack Eichel is physically strong. Like, I haven't seen too many guys like that. And, like, his so. in-tight handles sometimes, like, when he has to, like, coming out of the corner, like, he just does things that make you go, wow, <laughs> I didn't know he could do that. Uh, I was thinking, Mitch, the only thing about your uh, Snuggerud point, I guess he still, Snuggerud still plays with Cooley, but I realize, like, I think Perot and Smith are both going to BC, right? So they might like keep that exact same mm. line intact they at BC. Are. Is Smith is con committed to BC, right? Correct. So he could still be the finisher at BC, which would be a little unfortunate. Well, I mean, Cooley is at Cooley is at Minnesota, and we've seen Snugger kind of evolve what he's doing. So like, That's true, yeah. also the demands of the college game are a little bit different, right? Like, I think in with the NTDP, you can get away with a lot more. And so guys like Snugger Rude, who tend to be more focused on like efficiency and making the right play at the right time can kind of like naturally slip in the background. Whereas when you go to college, the guys who are trying everything, they have to scale their games back a little bit. And then that's kind of how the gap closes. Oh, but yeah, I think it's a good point reason. anyway. Like we're all, we always have to talk about where players are going and how it's going to impact things. I think it's good. So even conference to Leonard. conference, it's, it's hugely different. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Hockey East, more compact. Um, NCHC, more wide open, that sort of thing. Um, I like Leonard. He was built in a lab to just, like, put a smile <laughs> on my face. Like, like, he just goes out to kill every shift. And I'm like, 
Love it, buddy. Um, skilled as hell too. Gets inside the weight shifts, yep. the cutbacks. Like he has skill, legitimate skill, um, and a, a diverse shooter too. Like shoots off both his feet, curls and drags, pushes and pulls. Like, and he's easy to identify when because he's got that white stick at the end. <laughs> he's got yeah. like the white spray paint so i always know who That's he that. is which is and because of the trail of bodies uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, um Dvorsky we can put at 11 are we fine with that like just because i want that doesn't mean we have to do this oh that's specifically why i would be against it um <laughs> <laughs> Because I, I kind of see the other arguments. Like he's he's not that smart offensively. I've come down on his offensive projection, but not the rest. Like I think he's going to be this almost shutdown center, a pocket retriever. My main issue with him is that he doesn't really. Uh, I'm going to use a bell free term, but improve the condition of the puck. Like he's when he makes a play, it's usually neutral. He builds to a teammate with the exact same kind of pressure, and it's not like he doesn't create much. Uh, but he has the skill, so he could still add, uh, he has the tools like the, the skating posture, the, the handling to really add more skill as he grows. And just the fact that he's pretty efficient and he, he tries hard defensively and he can play on the boards in front of the net, he's going to find ways to score anyway. So I think we should respect that and have him there. But that's my, that's my view. Um, anyone else have Dvorsky takes? I don't see a lot. He's safe. Like he'll he'll play, and that's bring a... that's it. <laughs> like I don't see separating offensive abilities. I just don't. David, you seem to disagree. Well, I don't disagree. I think you don't need those kind of abilities to score a certain number of points in the NHL. Uh, as long as you have the right teammates and you play between those teammates because you make the right plays, you're still going to find points in the end. You won't be like a point per game player. Maybe a 50 point guy, 55. It's really not that fun, but he has a high likelihood of being an NHLer and a pretty good one on both sides of the puck. So it's not interesting, but it's functional and effective. If we put Simashev here, like we have, we are banking an upside, but Simashev is. Yeah, see, I might pound the table for Sandin Palika before Simashev. Oh, it's going to be another hard debate. Reinbacher. Yeah, and Reinbacher, Ryan Jesus, he's Christ, not that it. high. No, I'm not that high. I'm I'm with you on that. We're at the lull in David's curve. He'll be, <laughs> he'll be top three next meeting. Uh, <laughs> maybe if he, if he continues to improve, he's going to enter the top ten for sure. Like I'm going to push for him, but right now there's just too much uncertainty with him still. One okay. good tournament and decent league play. All right, shall we? Let's get some players on the board. Yep. Dvorsky 11. Do it. Shimashev, Sandim, Helica. I have two I names to bring before that. Lauren is going to hate me, but I think it's oh, as yeah. much as uh, I, I was think, I'm thinking time. of the same one. And William Whitelaw. Two players yeah. who are pretty similar. I was That's waiting for you to bring him. The I was waiting for you to bring I waited, him up at 10. I, waited. I was waiting I... for you to bring him up at 10. <laughs> Lauren, I've got your when... back. When JD was talking about Shala, that's all I could think was Quentin Musty. So, yeah, bigger, um, faster, bigger motor, smarter. Yeah. He's trying yeah. harder Not now. Hard. I see the effort level yes. is a lot better. Yeah. Um, the points continue to come. So, I mean, if I mean, I have Barlow ahead, but you're really just it's up if we're going with upside, Musty's probably. Yeah, but the question is, are you fine with top 15? Like, that's a big jump still. And he, he could just not become anything because of the decision making. Must he not issues. become anything? Oh, no. I think must that, that would surprise of, me too. But must I'm trying to. Ahead of Shale is going to turn me into the Joker. <laughs> <laughs> I, I well, think it's I so agree. easy to argue him over Shale. I agree like with the same that, issues. But there is but a lot to is... like about Musty. I know the downside, but there is a lot to like. And he's improved a lot. Yeah. I I last I'm year, a big fan. Year. I'm a big fan. Mm -hmm. So what Musty does is that he's he has the power forward mold. Like he, he could really become that, but he also has like the issue is the same with Fentilli and Mitchkov. Like his decision making isn't great right now. He makes some selfish plays, he misses other plays. 
but he flashes some high in hockey sense still like uh, Richard Swing teammates that he doesn't really see, he just anticipates the position and he makes quick tic-tac-toe plays. We see that from him. And the more his season progresses, the more he's, he improves defensively slightly and the more he uses his teammates, the more he plays a collective game, systemic game. And he has uh, all, all of the tools, speed, handling skills, he's physical. Like, he, the, the upside is super great with him. I really, really like him, but it's a risk like many others we ranked before. I'm going to yeah, mute my mic. <laughs> this, this is another one where it's like the Holinka is largely irrelevant to his projection. Like the Holinka does not align with the player that he actually is whatsoever. Fair. And, and I haven't seen a ton of OHL tape, so I should defer. And if I can, I'm, I want to hear it, Joey, on William Whitelaw, because he's pretty much the same player except uh, smaller. I love White Law uh, too, and I'm pretty sure Joey does too. I just have him in that, that next grouping. I mean, White Law was the next guy on my list. I don't know, again, like relative to others, I, I don't know kind of where he stacks up. But Dave and I saw two different games, but had like really similar notes, and they were recent games um, that he's becoming a bit more of uh, passing and moving, like uh, giving go, like finding out finding a teammate early and then repositioning himself, and he's still he's still the shooter. Like he still has those kind of shooters mentality instincts. Um, but he's using the hands in a way that, uh, uh, that's a little more, that's a little smarter as opposed to just trying to dangle through multiple layers of defense. So, um, like he'll, he'll get the zone, he'll give a lateral pass. And then he's also, he's really fast. Like he, I, I, I don't, I'm not as great on kind of the technical, uh, skating stuff as, as, as you guys are, but, um, I can see uh, for just based on the eye test that he builds up a ton of speed through his crossovers and he started to use that kind to kind of slip behind layers. Um, he, he gets multiple touches in an offensive sequence at times. So um, he'll reposition, get a puck and then uh, find, find either that same teammate or another guy in the offense. So um, he, he's become much more of he's developed himself as a playmaker which is really encouraging to see because that was kind of my knock on him it's like he has all this skill but he just comes in and just rips pucks oftentimes wide um but still the same great shooting habits in in offensive zone play when the puck goes high he's not afraid to like battle in in front like he's got that he's got an element of like i can score multiple ways i'm not afraid to get the dirty areas and jam pucks home too i got um, a question joey is he yeah. still being listed as a center, but lining up on the wing and taking some face-offs, but not all face-offs? Yes. It's okay. the same situation. Okay. Because that's um, something that I mean, he's, he's probably more of a winger. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, the only knock on him that I that I still have, the strength isn't great, obviously. Like, he does get bodied. Um, but there's, like I, – I know David th thinks – the defensive play is correctable or, or maybe has improved, but I just see total disengagement in my viewings. Like he always turns away. He doesn't face the puck. He turns away constantly. He flies the zone early. He um, and he's just like, time. he only comes to life when, when his team has the puck. And then it's like, how quickly can I get it on my stick? There's like, you're not getting any defensive reliability. from. Him. So he's pretty much like musty. He sounds like musty. Them. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they sound he has, like the same player. He's, he has better technical skating and better handling, maybe, but like he, he's less tall. So he has less physical potential. <laughs> is uh, as big. Uh, Musty so, covers uh, a lot of space with the space, yeah. though. Like, like he's going to become a better skater, I think. Yeah, me too. I, I like Musty more than White Law, but his motor is like, like really, really nice. Well, at least in the games I watched. So uh, the question um, is, well. Lauren, are you fine with Musty here or is that I too mean, early? Yeah, like, I, I mean, I, I'm fine with it. I see improvement in the most recent viewings that I've seen. Um, the motor, I find it's still a little inconsistent. I mean, defensively, it's definitely not as uh, concerning as it was early in the season. But um, I still find he's a little bit high in the defensive zone. He really doesn't engage physically unless, you know, um, he sees that maybe the puck is near him and that's when he goes towards it but he's not really um and then the other issue would be uh just whether or not he's seeing the correct plays or maybe he holds on to the puck for too long um where where he just decides some sometimes he's not using his line mates as much as i would 
like to see from a player like who has the playmaking abilities that he has. So, I mean, I think if we're betting on upside, he's probably fine here. It's just something that we'll just have to continue to monitor for the rest of the year. So can we do Musty and then White Lock? <sighs> <laughs> I still think it's a little early for White Lock. Um, and I don't mind Musty, Simashev, Musty and then White Lock. Or um, unless we don't want some, some other defend, defenseman before Simashev. Ryan Walker. For, for I mean, Sandin Palika has improved every step of the way. And I think we probably all were a little surprised that they used him on the power play right away in World Juniors. He looks good. Even he was shocked. Like, I legitimately, when I spoke to him, he was shocked that there was all this hype behind him. But when you watch him, he really doesn't make mistakes. His offensive zone entries are terrific. And he's doing well in the SHL, too. I think there's a lot there. I still don't know if he's a top pairing defenseman. I don't know if anybody in this draft is, but I still I like him a lot. He was we have more best defenseman. For- I, I thought more votes for Shimashev. Oh, we have the ranking of the votes right now based on the boards that are posted is Shimashev, Sandy and Palika, uh, Reinbacher. Okay, but they're all Let's, close. They're all so Shimashev has the better tools of the bunch, like he's six foot four, a fluid skater, fluid handler. It's just like his processing of the game sometimes, and he's mostly an easy defensive projection than a, an easier defensive projection than offensive projection right now because he misses some plays on the offense. His retrievals aren't great. Uh, Sandin Pilika is super agile skater. Like on regroups, he can shift away from from four checkers. He can easily evade them. On, on, he jumps down the offensive blue line. He participates in the offensive play, and he has some pretty good rush defense. I, I don't remember if the data backs it up much, but in general, I like it. his mobility serves him, serves him very well. It's just that he's on the lighter side, and we have seen other defensemen like him come to the draft, be very mobile from Sweden, who struggle with, with retrievals once they get in the AHL and NHL. So it's just like... Enough about really Soderstrom, to... though. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I saw him at the uh, Five Nations, and he really struggled. Like, once the play got to the goal line, just taking the puck out, he didn't have as much space. But he was better a bit at the World Junior 20, so I think he is improving. World Juniors than the Five Nations, yeah. he was. I, I really like him. It's just that there's a bit of risk to his pro- profile, so I think it's best we have Simichev a bit ahead, but he's also a big question mark. <laughs> and Rainbacker, he's the newcomer, so I think it's fine we take more time with him before we rank him higher. He's... Could... Go ahead. Shall we Shall we put Simichev, Sandine Pelica, Musty, Rainbacher, White Law, Shala? Yes. I think the room yeah, supports good. this. I would have Musty ahead of Merrick visibility. Group. We have to have it. Okay. Is that is that agreeable for everyone? Any objections? Well, I no, have that, some, that seems fine. But I I will <laughs> I will <laughs> relent. Um we have other meetings. Like this is not a final one. Yeah, no, I don't want to get bullied again, so I'll, I'll keep my <laughs> mouth shut. <laughs> wow. That's not what happened, G. I, I'm well, just having kind fun. Of was. It kind of was. <laughs> but we do it in yeah. good fun, out of love. Um, it is. Who do we put at 18? Riley Height, maybe? Barlow. Has... Yeah, Barlow, too. I think Barlow. Riley Height. We... Cam really has Riley Height, height yeah. at, at eight. Damn, Which is like very exciting for me. All but... you, my dude. Lay the height I... hype on us. He's... You know, last last four games I watched, just in the last couple of weeks, like he's just getting better and better, maximizing his tools, puck protection, crafty plays. Like whether it's a long, whether it's a, a long east to west pass or a short little slip, um, he's basically like, like <laughs> he's basically dominating across the board. Defensive plays better, um, driving guys to the outside on the back check. Uh, winning battles below the net, he's nasty. Um, yeah, like he's just, he's just, he's he's polished for what he is right now. I think, uh, I think there is times where his you know activity level wavers, and that's the biggest knock to him. Um, but uh, you know, I think the mental and physical pace is just like on another level right now, and I like him more than Jaeger and. Like, yeah, I, I think he's, you know, he's, he's better than Cagnoni and 
in terms of the WHL guys left. And um, yeah, like, you know, I've seen him a ton and the evolution from his D minus one to now is like really, really shocking to me. I thought that he may have, uh, he may have stagnated a little bit at the beginning of the season, but now it's just another level. And now he has Cohen Zemer actually passing using the threat of his shot. So he's pretty, he's scoring a ton now. Um, yeah. Fun player. What about uh, Ethan Gauthier? No, he's in this conversation. Maybe a bit below. Yeah. Like I have him after Barlow, but I'm not sure. And after Jaeger, after no, really ahead of Jaeger. Well, what do you think, Mitch? Between those two, uh, height over Jaeger for sure at this stage. Height's more of a play driver. Team. Skill level's a bit better. I think Jagger has been kind of stuck in neutral for the most part this season. The early playmaking improvements haven't necessarily carried over to five on five consistently. Um, he's, he was never been a play driver. I think a lot of the hype came around the fact that he scored a couple cool goals against Winnipeg and everyone was like, Oh, look at this guy dangling through. And that's not really his game. He's more of a guy who reloads high above the play, gets the puck in motion, fires it on net. And you hope that the playmaking improves. He's a good player. Uh, I think Jagger is pretty much a, a very high probability bet to become a mid six score, but height just has that little extra. You add in the physical game, you add in how he just controls the game on the power play, like an NHLer. I mean, I think he has some serious point producing upside bare minimum. So the sneaky physical game is only going to add to that. Oh, well, height. Okay. Yeah. Height. Go and check with Barlow. Do we want Barlow height. after? I love yeah, Goche. And then just, Goche. I, I, I got a, all right, I have my doubts with him. I have so some games that I watch where he feels like a top ten pick, and others where he's second rounder. It's because he isn't touching the puck all that much. Go to you. No, I mean you going back and forth. Uh, yeah, that, that's my thing. <laughs> you know, yeah. right now. But still, that's like the middle between those two points, and it's just that he doesn't hold on to the puck almost ever. So it's hard to really evaluate his full skill level. But that's really good for his initial projection because we know he can just make one or two touches on the puck and pass it to a teammate or position inside space, drive the net, the back check, forward check. Like he has everything. And the he's violent as hell. Yeah. And the, I, the, I the love The physical that. game is great. So yeah, that, that's his range. Uh, about around 20, uh, that's fine with me. So okay. let's do Barlow or Goche. I have, I have an opinion on this, but I want to hear David's first. I don't know. I'm really split. So I want to hear yours. Well, just, well, just well, batting it back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Lauren. Right, I, Lauren, hold on. Both of you, quiet. Oh, Lauren, okay. you get to I, talk about Barlow. Okay, well, I haven't watched any Goche, but um, Barlow is basically just a super safe NHL projection, and I know that word gets overused a lot, but this is an NHL player already in the OHL. I mean, everything he does, both ends of the ice, he uh, high work rate, um, constantly carrying play up the ice, driving play for Owen Sound, um, really good shot, um, playmaking is coming along nicely, um, defensively aware, responsible, um, just kind of your well-rounded kind of easy to project to the pro level uh, type of player right now. Where does that leave us? Now you two can go and <laughs> Mitch, on, on your takes. Mitch Brown. What's your opinion, Mitch Brown? I think, I think Gauthier is more skilled. I think Barlow has the best tool of them. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's a tricky one. It's like one guy shot is obviously the best skill that either player has in Barlow, but Gauthier is a better passer. He's a better puck handler. I would argue that he's more inside driven too, which might be the difference between their upside in the NHL. So let's go Gauthier. Hell yeah. Although Hell. Barlow, as he continues to just score a goal every single game is going to complicate this. Yeah, he's really good at shooting it in tight spaces too, like uh, I think you accidentally put Brimley at 19, which I don't. <laughs> um, Brimley's it. name, it is his time just to come up as part of the conversation. Um, I like Brimley a lot. Uh, dynamic. He's shown flashes of deception. His game is growing. Uh, he can support play. He's an ace in transition um solid defensively like he plays on the penalty kill uh defending one goal leads like he he's so advanced for his age i have questions about the skill level 
I do, but I like a lot of what I see. And I think this is Brindley's range. I do. We're also missing a defender. Uh, yeah, Goliath. Are we going to drop him out of the top 20 entirely? Will it upset Dylan? <laughs> yes, I think. Oh, then I absolutely. Guess. It's about his range. It's just that he has one elite tool, a bit like sending Pelika, but he's an even better skater than sending Pelika. Like, um, there's a massive difference between those two. Like his, his skating is one of the best we've seen in recent drafts, but he doesn't use it to the maximum of its ability. And his in-zone defense is very, very far from being a um, angel projectable right now. And he doesn't show the same playmaking flashes that he did in the first part of the year. So I think it's fine to drop him a bit. But I don't think we should drop Jaeger too much because he's pretty certain NHL right too. Yeah. We're entering the Jaeger versus Brinley versus insert a million other players all in kind of the same. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's get some feedback on the, the Brindley thing. Please. I like, I like Brindley. I like don't, him a lot don't let me be the one leading that I, charge. I, 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 mean, I have Jaeger a bit ahead of Brindley. I've seen Brindley more. And... Everything everybody has said is accurate on Brindley. I do think his skating is really good, though. I mean, it's it's tremendous, and that and and that's what I think will open up more scoring opportunities for him in the future. But again, you know, he he's a fairly young guy too, uh, playing in a college game, so we have to look at that. Now, in the World Juniors, it was a crowded World Junior roster; like it was really hard for him to stand out. I think. I thought he good. excelled. I thought he was excellent at the World he was Juniors. Great. Yeah, that's fine too. But what I like about his game at the World Juniors is that he showed more playmaking of the rush. Like he was doing these yep. overlapping, underlapping cuts. Like he would go ahead of players, drop the puck to them, and would create space for them. So I think he has offensive That's a continuation of what he was doing at college too. Like I was seeing yeah. that happen as he progressed through the season. So it it's wasn't a flash. His projection is more like a bomb third line maybe checker with some offense like we have to be careful not moving in too much but i really like him more than in the past board yeah i think we should have brindley at 22. mitch you've gonna... been oddly quiet yeah so i like hanzek more than brindley but kegnoni less than brindley now and i think jagger is still better than brindley too Hanzek, you're projecting them to do largely the same thing in the NHL, but one of them is a better finisher. The playmaking is roughly comparable at this stage. And of course, uh, Hanzek has the physical game that, well, Brindley's is very good. And of course, being the size that he is with the skating that he has is, a, is an advantage in the NHL because he can get lower, cut through guys more. But I think ultimately Hanzek just has that little bit more for me. Six foot four. <laughs> He's a monster. It's yeah. too bad he got injured at the World Junior Championship because yeah, he was yeah, playing it's good for, for his age. And that's his first season in North America, I think. And he's producing a lot, flashing a lot. Okay, uh, are we cool with Hanzek then Jaeger? And then Brindley? Yes. Ole do it. Can so I we have to up? talk about Stramel. Yeah, so I... I... I just remember watching him last year and being struck by like the skating ability. Like he did a lot of creating with his feet. Uh, I don't know if that's kind of consistent with you guys. See, I haven't seen him at all this year, but like he seemed to just be the pace was um, ahead of, of everybody else on the team. And then being able to process and, and his hands were able to keep up with the skating ability. So like being really smart, driving deep back, delaying uh attacking in waves um it, it was just he, he wasn't someone that i paid super close attention to because i knew he had an, because i didn't know he had another year um but for me it was just his offense was about uh pace and then finding support and it was something he did really uh, a really good job of last year and to me yeah i've seen him a lot the last, last, the last few years um, the one thing I will add about Wisconsin about JD's part is now he's playing center there. So like yep. second so line center too. Second line center. Forgetting about all that. Um, he does play a pace though. He has worked on his shot a lot. I think it's improved a lot. He's always played up in age. This is a guy who's been playing up in age and he's all right with it. Like he knows, like he's up for the challenge. He's up for the challenge physically. He knows how to play physical. 
he's nasty. nasty. <laughs> like he can be very nasty. He can <laughs> like be. he loves he likes cheap it. shots, he loves that. which I love. He loves so, and he's got pretty good hands. Like his shot is good. He's worked on it. And so I do like him and I do have him in like the twenties too, because I do think he's NHL transferable. I do. Mm-hmm. Cause I think speed is there enough to, to have a difference at the NHL. He's not like speedy, but he can be quick and can be tricky at times around the net too. But what is he in the NHL? Bottom six for sure. I think. Yeah, he's so a long. he's a third liner. He's got, but he could be a third he's liner. Got who small can area points. playmaking, uh, some good yeah, habits yeah. off the rush. Like he drives yeah, inside, he's his pulls defenders towards him, puts the puck into space. Um, but he also sometimes tries to play faster than he is, um, which which limits his output. Kind of you know McGroarty esque. Um, he's good in the corners. I think he. Oh, he's deadly in the corners. I think I think that's where he's better than McGroarty, right? I think that's where what the difference is. Mitch, what what do you think? Uh, yeah, I agree with everything that's been said so far. His ability in the corners, how his shot has improved, especially also like his ability to move the puck in transition has improved a lot. It still has a long way to go before it gets NHL caliber, but I think he's a fourth liner personally. Um, I think. There's a lot of like interesting components to his game that could help him achieve a line higher, but there are probably like five, six guys from North America who I'd prefer to have over him still. Okay, yeah, I fair. have him outside of the top 32. I thought like he had to be brought second. up, but I don't advocate for him in this spot. Yeah, I think it's I think it's a reasonable time, especially because we're going to be bringing up guys like Matthew Wood too, who kind of land on the opposite end of how we're going to project them. I have some guys with upsides, upside left. Like we talked a bit about Luca Cagnoni, uh, which talked about Callum Ritchie and Oscar Fisker Molgar. And I really want to bring up. Yeah, I watched him. I watched him quite a bit in the SH, and I was really impressed. So I would definitely give give uh, want to have him around. Definitely in the first round, I would think at this range anyway. And the day that was really, really good, almost like Carlson level of offensive abilities um, in terms of generating chances for himself and his teammates. There were uh, quite a few rebounds, and I think he scored like two goals of his goals so far from rebounds. But I think there's, I mean, the tools are really, really intriguing, at least. Well, Almost thing, above average across the board. Sorry. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Um, Dylan has Mukanov in this yeah. range, and we haven't put Mukanov down. Um, I think we have to at the least put him down at 25 to respect Dylan's work, unless the pushback is that substantial. And I see that smirk, David. So uh, I don't want to do it. But in in lieu of having Dylan around, why don't you stomp on his dreams? Uh, I like him. <laughs> I, I like do? him. You know, it's just that, yeah, he's barely producing in the VHL. He's five foot eight. He's, he's, he's really fantastic. Like you watch him, he has so much space. His skating is above average. He has handling skills. He can make plays. Like he's a playmaker too. And he's very good off puck too. Like he anticipates the flow of the play, positions well. It's just that it never ends up with a goal and how many of his shots. So, uh, and so he's like the, Russian Brindley is what you're telling. Me. Yeah, <laughs> they, they're, they're very similar, actually, like in terms of play style. And I think he kind of is a bit of a better playmaker, too. He sees a bit more, but that's pretty close. The issue is more like when we look at this player profile, historically, five foot eight plays in the MHL, VHL, um, there's not scoring a lot. Like, I'm not sure he's going to get drafted high. In the next year, is what's going to happen? Like, is he going to develop significantly from where he is now? That's pretty much my my questions. I, I like Mulgar more than him. I think we should, should have Mitch. Him down. Do we have a lot of reports from Dylan on Mukanov? Because yeah, we, a lot. Like, uh, yeah. 10, then 12. then we gotta respect his work. I think, right. <laughs> but we also have a lot of reports on him from uh, Lassie and David too. 
And okay, okay, that's if that's both a good of, and if both of them think that he should be lower, then we would move him lower. And on top of that, like I agree with David, the profile is not encouraging, and there are still a ton of guys from North America who deserve to be in this range. Fair. Like, we that shouldn't put him down too much, but like maybe one or two back. spots down. I think that's fair. Like, am I taking Nate Danielson? Am I taking him over a guy like Nate Danielson? No. I like I, okay, I haven't okay. watched him, but just based on you're telling me he's Brindley but doesn't score, but allergic to points. And it's like, yeah, I'd rather have Nate Danielson, who's been on a tear and probably should be 10 spots higher than we have him. Totally fair. I just want to respect everyone's work. Yeah. Um, and we will I was gonna respect, say that about Danielson. We will respect Dylan's at some point with Mukainov, but it doesn't have to be now. Um, so should we put Danielson down at 25? Mitch, I mean, you just uh, said he should be 10 spots higher. Like What's 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 the hold yeah, up? Yeah, put him down. Okay. Well, the hold up is that in the first two thirds of the season that we've played so far, he was pretty basic, and then it's really been that he's been on this hot tear since December, where you're starting to see him try to create more. He's trying to be inventive. It's not always perfect, but you're starting to see a player who's really pushing his limits. You add in the fact that he's already he's always been a strong defender from the time he's entered the WHL. He's has a lot of NHL caliber tools like his skating, his shooting, his handling, everything. But it all seems to be improving and coming together at the right time. So he's if also we have old next as meeting, hell. he might be a t- yeah, but still Ted's like so many there are tons of late <laughs> there are t- there are tons of late birthdays that we've been talking about so far. So yes, uh, it's not a huge it's not a huge issue. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's put him at twenty five, and then let's do um Mulgard, uh, the Danish guy. Yeah. He's really and, awesome. Like he's, he's he's pretty raw, but he has all the tools in the world that you need. His motor is super high. His defensive game is really projectable. He has small area skills. Like he can play some physic. He play can play guys physically, but also use his speed to take the puck before they can reach it. And um, he has flashes of high end playmaking too. He's a project. He's been playing in Denmark until 2021, and he's really flashing a lot of skills right now. So and he's light too. So I think we uh, I think he has more development developmental runway than other guys it's a bet on upside i think all right what about and russ i got your back mm-hmm. on this one what about matthew wood he is a blunt object right he's just a shot um he's just a four check north south uh kind of has tunnel vision um but he's producing he has those tools uh david <laughs> you don't seem enthusiastic about well, <laughs> just describe all of his flaws <laughs> i think, I think I, well thing- because you have to because he's producing so much that you have to contextualize it like right. Yukon's offense runs through wood which is no small feat for a true freshman he's, but, a, he's the youngest guy in college hockey he's not even a, just a true freshman he's the youngest yeah so as far as like runway there's runway he's even grown uh and i forgot to even give the the new status to the uh, database, but he's grown like already this year and he might grow some more because there's height in his family. So like, I think based on the fact that he is developing like this, he is a guy that is the youngest in college hockey. I think we have to take these things into account that the fact yes. that he's succeeding with these things, I can't imagine it's going to get worse. I don't the see context it going to is so important. That's why I had to leave that way. And the shot is so potent. Uh, his playmaking, like his tunnel vision, but what he does, he does exceptionally well. It is yeah. the basis for an NHL career. Um, I, I Can I push back on some of this a little bit? With what please do, mean? please. I think, I don't think he's a playmaker. I fully agree with you, but I think he has the framework to become one because he's very good when he gains the zone because he's the skating. He knows that he's not going to a rush player. So what does he do? He cuts back. He puts himself in a better position. He'll be able to find teammates from there once he starts looking. And of course, the handling. He does have really good moments of puck control, creativity. It's just the skating is so variable and the hands like aren't that truly like high-end level that when he has to move and handle it all falls apart. Yeah. But if he if if he if his skate improves and he gets a more stable base because his depth changes all the time, right? And then your hands have to make up for that. If he if his skate improves and he becomes more stable, the hands are probably going to go up like a full grade. And then the projection with him is going to look probably significantly different. So you think he can be more than a blunt object? But you don't push yeah. back that he is a blunt object as currently constructed. 
Exactly. I just think he okay. puts himself in favorable positions and there's enough finesse to his game at lower speeds that he'll eventually figure it out, provided there's enough physical development there. There's a couple so, other things. Sorry, so Russ, he, you go ahead. He, he's 6'4 now, um, so he's grown a little. Uh, he They play a high movement op, uh, power play and he's good with that. Like he's already yeah. he's already good with that. So do we put him down at 27? Because I think that's like, that's as low as we can drop as we can drop wood. Yeah. I, I don't think you could put him any lower. It's Which just, he's a, might, he's a hell projection. of a turn of phrase. <laughs> <laughs> because we have other tall players who are, I think better than him right now. Like Richie, um, even the Daniel Bott is much more refined than Wood. Like even in terms of skating, playmaking, he's one of the but better players. He just players. turned seventeen. Like you have to take that into yeah. account. Yeah, and and, risk and Wood has the bottom line. What is it? The most well, production. Like he, yeah. he's scoring a ton. And Hockey East is not an easy scoring. place to be for a young guy. Hockey East, exactly. This is a critical point. Mm -hmm. All right, we can do it. But we're going to monitor this in the second half. It should be better if it's like just his competition holding him back. He should have a better second half than the first one. Oh, just the joy of overruling David. <laughs> <laughs> I have other players I want to bring up. Please, please, please do. Richie Cagnoni, yep. did we put him down? No, both of those need to go down now, though. No, like we should talk about them. Lauren. Please do. Here's the thing with Richie is that the, the pace is an issue. The skating is an issue, but he's just a really, really smart player. I mean, the hockey sense is off the charts. I mean, he, he does everything right on the ice to the point where he appears to be really, really passive. And sometimes there are more flashes of that kind of dynamic handling skill, whether it's taking defenders one-on-one -on -one or um, kind of that deceptive handling skill that he flashes maybe two or three times a game. But for the majority of viewings, it's, you know, that simple kind of back and forth following play, supporting play, uh, defensively responsible, um, so that it kind of blurs the line of like, is he, does he have more of that offensive dynamic skill in his arsenal or is this just the who he is going to be at future levels that kind of uh second or third line center kind of um d defense first penalty kill uh the skating is probably the biggest limitation right now it really affects how effective he is in transition um his ability to get in on the four check which he doesn't often right now um, so that that would be where the concern lies. But honestly, there's not a lot to not like about Richie. It's just there are um, kind of concerns that are holding him back right now, at least from producing more than he should be, I feel like. Yes, that sounds like a typical late first round guy. Let's go. He might be in uh, Gabe Perot range, too. A guy who's mm. definitely going to go in the first round, and we probably will rank him lower than he's going to go. Uh, does he have the feet to really play in the NHL? Does he have a physical game? I think he's a great USHL player, and maybe in college. I'm not sure about the NHL. I think he works, or I think he he knows his feet are a limitation, though, and that like it, the way mm. like he, he he's able to operate around it, and it's it's two strides, and then. He finds it like a guy who you didn't even know was there, um, and I think like the it, the physical element of it. Yes, you're probably right, but like he he moves the puck before like whether it's a drop, a touch, a slip. Like he he sucks in pressure and he moves it. Like rarely do you see him commit a turnover on the wall, and he'll take a hit to make a play. And I think like if the skating improves, like as uh, his his passing is so exceptional right now. Like there's only only room for improvement. And then I think the shooting is actually strength of his is off puck timing, finding soft spaces as like the high guy on a one two. Uh, like he's got a, he's got a really nice curl and drag that I think is an asset too. We should also I add that like Jimmy has uh, Noah Dower yeah. Nelson. This is the lowest of his range. He has more tools in barrel like. We could better, do Nilsson Perot then. Like usually, I, I there are games where like I, I'm there for Smith and Leonard, and I kind of he just comes out of nowhere, and you're like, wow, he really like. He has a good Smith's delay having game. an off night. He doesn't yeah, force like, plays. 
He takes what's no. in front of him. Um, he's a play. Connector. And if Smith's playing like is having like a trying to be a a hero night, like Perot drives the bus and he's like, steady. Uh, he's reliable. Setup, you yeah. know what you're <laughs> getting from Perot every viewing. Uh, well, yeah. Even what if they laughs. Yeah, no, I'm not laughing. I, I think those are all good arguments. It's just that it's offense without the tools to back it up, really. Like it's it's all hockey sense and not hockey sense as great as Smith. Passing skill. There's the tool. Yeah, and, but I, and I, the he handling, can, he handling, can, handling is just a passer. The he handling can spread super high it level. The hands okay, are. I, high I, I disagree. Level. That, that's fine. I think we have enough arguments to put him there right now and in this spot. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta put the Kane best game on. I've seen of him is my last viewing. So. We shouldn't drop Mukano that much anymore. Oh, Since Jesus. Yeah, right. so I thought about him. He belongs ahead of Wood <laughs> at 27. Okay, fine. Do it. Do it. Even if it pains me to see Stramel outside of the first. He's a bottom line guy. So he should be in the second round, not the first. I think he's so fraught as a projection because of his environment playing that's, up. that's yeah that's a good argument like i just uh, i'll be confused about what to make of him all season and i keep watching um if you're daniel daniel on bradley nado oh <laughs> um <laughs> so yeah so like what? you know dual threat um Dual threat. I, I the skating is a little rough. Like he's like a four and a half right now. If that. Um, yeah, projections of four and a half, actually. Yeah. Um, you know, he has handling skills. He's like uh Christelle in the sense that he can just like execute at the BCHL level, like just ri- at ridiculous paces. Um his you know, the, his line's a little weird. He plays with his brother in Suniev and they kind of switch roles like nonstop. So that's why you get games where like Nadeau is just rifling shots and then other games where, where, um, you know, he's setting up his brother or soon he have, um, but, uh, you know, like there's just a lot of tools. I think a lot of, a lot of cool tools in his repertoire. I think there's a lot of things that we, we typically like for upside sake, like value in, um, Nadeau, um, he was, you know, he was mixed at the BCHL showcase, but every other viewing I've had of him, he's been, just, you know, absolutely dominant, changes angles with his shot, um, deception throughout his game. So, um, I, like, and, you know, like we say, he, like the stride isn't good, but he has a lot of agility, like um, a lot of different edge base maneuvers to uh, find space and everything. So I'm a huge fan of Nadeau. Um, I think he should be around here. I agree. I didn't like him as much in the last meeting, but I've come around on his playmaking a lot. Like I think he sees a lot more plays than I, than I first thought. And I like his skating a bit more than you too. I think he could get to an average projection if we, everything goes right and he has the right coaches. If he's in like 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 the junior A argument too, I think if he's in the WHL, he's doing the same things. Like the the tools are too good. Um and I don't think Suniev is too far off, even though his skating is even more bleak. King. King. <laughs> I love Suniev, and I was I hoping that him. if if Nadeau came up, that Suniev would have to follow soon because Suniev rules. Uh, Mitch, David, yeah. Russ, uh, have you seen much Suniev? Because I just, I think so highly of him. He, he's going yeah. to crush at UMass. I have him at the end of the second round. Um, I don't remember, like, I don't have notes on him and I should have had him, but like, it's so the skating is mostly a playmaker and not an off puck player, if I can remember correctly. Uh, the skating is also a pretty big flaw for him. It's um, dreadful. And it doesn't have that one, like, close to elite tool, like Nadeau. And Nadeau has a shot, and I don't see that in Sunya. He's more like well rounded. He's very effective at this level. I don't know what this game looks like in college and in the NHL. Uh, a, I like him, but I'm not sorry. as much. Go He's ahead. He's so smart. He's yeah, so smart. Some, some of his parts. He creates really advantages good. with every touch, with every subtle movement. Like he improves the odds of every play. 
Um, you don't see you don't see like guys like um, manipulating off like a sideboard retrieval and then like spinning out of the spinning out of the pressure, protecting the puck, popping his hip pocket, then finding a guy across the ice. Like I do think his playmaking is a separating tool, but I, I do agree that you know that he's older, right? Like he's a yeah. he's an old he's an older player. Um, playing in junior oh, a four, like, there's a lot of knocks to that yeah like in the bc showcase they had him as a, a already d plus one for some reason yeah but um, had me so confused uh, <laughs> um but it's too soon for him but he's someone we should keep as part of this too soon we have two russian forwards who we should probably yeah. be talking about yeah sorry i like but quite a bit i think he he has improved quite a bit throughout the season. Playmaking looks really good. He has a decent shot, and the handling skill is is quite impressive. The skating is it's pretty meh, but he does have some some skating skills and nice heel to heels and similar to that. And I mean, Rakov is he's he's pretty bland, but he's also pretty good everywhere so i would maybe even have bought ahead of rakko at this point just based on pure upside i can agree dylan has them the other way so i don't know they are pretty yeah. close yeah uh, we should respect Dylan's um, ranking then. Have Rykov before bot. Rykov is really all about, like, he has a ton of tools and he's pretty smart too. Like, he has the right rotations on the ice, he has small area skills, and he shows playmaking at times. Like, he prepares players with deception, but not all the time. So, there's nothing like high end, but he has some great performances mm -hmm. in the VHL. And last he said it with bot, like, his skating is a bit of a problem, but. It's not that bad. Like it's maybe a four, four, four point five on our scale, and he's six foot four, six foot five, and he's really great as a playmaker. Like he sees the eyes very well, and he's smart, and he gets involved physically, so he projects as an NHL or so. Grayson Sachin is another guy that could be in this range. I don't know if we have enough people that have watched him, but he's an incredible four checker. Like yeah, like he <laughs> he does stuff like you'll like attack the stick before, and then you'll. Uh, power up and under the guy to steal the puck below the goal line and he has legit handling skill like there's uh, i really i've only seen him a couple times but he's he's just like incredible in the games i saw i don't know if his projections all that high but like he's an nhler for sure i agree he's very similar to barky who i think is probably a worse skater but a bit more skilled and better defensively um they're they are they are both in this range, but also Caden Price. I think I think it's Caden Price's time to get on here. Uh, David watched him the other night and was like, "Look, he's doing things offensively again." And so I was I was encouraged by that. It's just he's really inconsistent. Like it's rare I say this about a player because I value flashes, but uh, from shift to shift to period to period, like you watched him, and sometimes he looks like an NHLR with the puck moving and the moves he pulls off at the offensive line other times he's i'm not so sure but he has a physical you can talk about him but you've seen way him way more way more than me sorry i feel i haven't seen him in a while though so it feels so far i feel so far removed from what I, what is actually happening in the last couple of months but he's a solid rush defender the edges have improved a lot since the start of the season uh, the playmaking from the point has flashes of like truly high end stuff, but he also has a tendency to just default to making simple, basic plays. And in transition, he has a bit of trouble with back pressure, but when he has a little bit of time and space, he's able to manipulate opponents, suck in the extra four checker, pass through them, hit the open teammate. So just a guy who looks like an NHLer and has enough skill that you can bet on him improving significantly in the next couple of years. That sounds like an early second runner. I have two right, OHL guys. Bo, Bo, Bo. Uh, I Bo. have I have Bo Aki and Joey nice. Willis. I have Willis ahead, but I have these two in this range. We stand yeah. in onomatopoeia. So <laughs> Bo Aki, it's a vote for me. <laughs> um, we had Willis, I think it'd be tail end of the first round last time, just as like a name we threw out there, but he looks amazing lately. Uh, just the uh, playmaking ability, the uh, offensive ideas, the creation. Um, he's 
got kind of found this like new chemistry with his line mates um just kind of pushing play um defensively he's just as solid as he was at the beginning of the season um good reads um I would like to see him push pace a little bit more like for checking more um a little bit more physical but I mean he looks really good in the last three or four games that I've seen okay Chicago yeah. kid <laughs> 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 Instant analysis from Joey Batman. Man. We like that. Um, we, like that. <laughs> we also have to do Tom Delander, I believe. Uh, yeah. Based on Jimmy's yeah. ranking. And since Joey chimed in, um, I hope you got my my back on this one. A Ram Manishan who Mitch, I feel like, should just like adore. Um, you know, I like, like how off- he's, he's solid. Yeah, I like Strasburg more. Offensive activations, really? like that's that's. I like Will Ender Mitch. more too. He's like a version of Aki, but he has more offensive flashes. So he's not as projectable defensively, uh, not as maybe as smart defensively, but like his tools are just as good. His mobility, he can kill the rush, and can. And when he has options in front of him, he's really good at moving the puck on retrievals. It's a bit of another issue, and he misses offensive opportunities, but he has the tools and the defensive game. So. A bit like Aki and Bryce. Yeah, I, I saw love- that the Five Nations. He was good. He wasn't like as good as Sandy Pelicchio or anything, but he was good. He was effective. Yeah, just solid, like. Yeah. yeah. Mitch, My you last said week. that you prefer. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. That's um, okay. <laughs> we'll we'll get back to you. Um, you prefer Strathman to Manishan. Yeah. Um, so now I'm just gonna pit you and Joey in a battle uh, of takes. Uh, I think they're close. They're definitely close. Yeah, they are. They're very close. Well, Strathman's Strathman's more reliable for sure. Manetti, er, is it Manetian or Manetian? I don't know how to. Say I think it. Manetian. Oh. Manetian. Let's uh, go with so, that. Yeah, M- Manetian is. Uh, he's super fun. He's a. He's probably the better skater of the two. Crafty tries to uh, tries different fakes and uh, like to beat an F one uh, different skating devices. Super mobile from the point, almost to a fault. Tries different. Uh, tries to walk the line, um, bait defenders, get them moving one way, and explodes out the other. Um, I think he's a he's more offensive. Uh, super active in the in activating in the rush. I think he's more offensive probably than than Strathman. Um, I don't think he's as good of a defender. There are times where he tries things, um, and he exposes the puck for for a move, whether it's a pass fake or something like that. And, and he does get called on it and play turns the other way and it leaves you really frustrated. So he's got to be, he's got the skating um, to be where, where he doesn't have to do that. And he can just kind of use a weight shift, explode out the other way and then kind of uh, uh, make his pass and, and reorient uh, a little bit more defensively. That's that's kind of where I see his his progression going. I think he's all offense, and sometimes the NTDP get burned for it and turns the puck over in bad situations. With Strathman, I think it's a little bit of the opposite. I think he's he's good he's good defensively at this level, but I don't think um, I worry about his footwork, and it's uh, it's a yeah. concern that I I've I've raised to I think a couple of you, but um, you see him take a lot of like. And I, I mentioned this in my stock watch, but it seems like when he goes in for a retrieval or on a four check, he's very predetermined at times and he gets away with it because he's big and strong and has a long reach. Um, but I don't think that flies at the next level. There's some basic activation. He's a good power play quarterback for, for Youngstown. There's a little bit of offensive ability there. He's not a bad skater by any means, but I think it's got to improve. I like his, I like how he defends the rush better than, uh, Manishan. He's aggressive at blues, steps up early, surfs, takes good angles. Um, so they kind of, they have sort of uh, these supplementary skills, but I do think Manishan has the higher upside. Before you rank those two guys, I should talk about Dredge Civic. Dra- Dragon yeah, Civic. Dragon Civic. Uh, thank yeah, you, yeah. And, and also Aki. Uh, yeah. yeah, definitely. I thought Aiki. we put Aki down. No. No, but well, when David was talking about Willander, I mean, um, like uh, Aki is definitely activating a lot more. I mean, he's cutting um, into the middle. He's using the middle of the ice more, um, uh, activating, getting down 
down low, threading passes through seams. I mean, I've seen a lot more offense, uh, at least offensive creation lately than I did at the beginning of the season. Um, really good at eliminating threats, uh, defending, um, uh, kind of weighing risks. And he's he doesn't take too many risks at either end of the ice, but it's what makes him such a reliable player in his own end. Um, and he is starting to take a little bit more of that um, steps to create offense. And I think maybe getting Grant Clark back will probably uh, limit some of the opportunities he gets on the power play and that sort of thing. But um, I really liked what I've seen from Aki this so far. Yeah. Okay. Let's, I like that. Warren's work. Let's put Aki down. Um, and then do we do Strathman? Munition or uh, I like your munition more than Strathman. Oh, did Hold we put up. Willis down yet? No, we can put him down now, though. Who? I Joey think Joey Willis. Joey gets final say on Munition Strathman. I mean, I agree. Uh, I, sorry, I did look it up. I had an old pronunciation guide. It is Minetian. Minetian. Okay. okay. My Just apologies. Correct on that. No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> um, to anyone watching. <laughs> uh, I, I mean Mitch has seen him a lot I'd be curious to get Russ's input but I just think with uh, I think Minetti is a better skater I think he's smarter offensively and I think with his footwork you can correct some of the defensive flaws I think there's a I think Stratton is going to be good but there's a longer progression to him being a more modern NHL defense Minetti fits that mold already we also Let's need to get Dragasavic down I think Dragasavic is probably better than both of them. Does the yeah, same things. Is. Skane's a bit worse. Had a 28-game point streak in the WHL as a defenseman. Um, Put him that, down. Is, yeah. is that good? I Rumor has it. <laughs> For posterity. It's like I, they have they have the records going back like 30 <clears throat> years. It's the longest one by a defenseman by like 10 games or something. It's pretty wow. ridiculous. Hmm. Seems okay. There are a lot of concerns, but there are a lot of concerns with him, but he is talented. Um, Lassie, where, where are we at with, with Halton and who showed so much promise? Mm, I think this is a fine range for him, but uh, do have Felix Nilsson ahead of him from Europe, but then he would be the next guy from Europe for me. Okay, so no Halton. Um, yeah, can we talk? Can we talk about Hunter? Oh boy. Uh, first of all, <laughs> I don't know how to say it either. Oh, you know boy. how on elite prospects we have like the nicknames below the, yeah. the name? I want yeah. David's Hunter in quotations. <laughs> oh boy, versus Savage. Um, oh Lauren, God. why don't you take the floor? Versus Savage. I got you. On. Yeah, there, there we go. But I haven't been that impressed. I think I thought coming in, there was going to be a lot more offensive creation, more activations. I mean, he's played a pretty passive game in Kitchener this season. Um, defensively, he hasn't looked all that bad. I mean, this is probably the range for him. I mean, I could see him going higher if he kind of takes the next steps offensively. Um, but yeah, I mean, I I do have I have a couple forwards ahead of Bruce Savage at this range. Um, Sorry, I, I got to meet uh, Hunter at NTP, and the the boys call him Brew apparently because that's how he introduced himself to me. He said he said hi, hey, I'm I'm Brew, so maybe we can stick with that. Yeah, yeah, that's like really that. cool. <laughs> we should give him some points for being Brew. Um, and like introducing himself to me like that, he's like, hey, I'm yes. Brew, not Hunter, Brew. That that takes Brew. confidence. That takes chutzpah. Um, I respect it. Um, so, so Lauren, who do you want at 44? Uh, I would probably lean Pinelli. I think the, there's a lot more offensive upside. The other guy I have is Denver Berkey, but I think Pinelli has the higher offensive upside. He's producing a little bit more. Um, there's lots of high motor, high engagement, good defensive work rate. Um, just kind of like a smaller smaller player but all speed all motor um can push pace uh can score I, at the beginning of the season i thought maybe he was just a shot um lately he's showing a lot more um playmaking abilities he's really using his line mates working give and goes um working well in transition so he's uh definitely rising and i think a lot of outlets will probably be surprised we have him this low um but yeah i feel like this is the range for him and we'll we'll circle back to that one. 
Um, so yeah, who do we put Alton in? We should put Alton in down here, I think. Well, yeah. looks like Mitch is ahead of us. He has him already at 40. I, did, I didn't do it. Oh, well, <laughs> maybe someone else did. I don't know who, but maybe someone else. No, did. David, I wonder who. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so Little we also Stanberg. have we have Zemer, we have uh, Noel Nord, um, we have Stenberg, we have um, Barky. Barky. Sachin. Sachin. Nielsen. Nielsen. Nielsen down? Uh, Nielsen is not down. We can put Nielsen down. I know Lassie likes him a lot. Yes. All right, he's 46th. That is the <laughs> most enthusiastic Lassie has been this whole <laughs> meeting. That, yes. that was like him headbanging for that. Thing. So <laughs> out of respect to our Finnish comrade, we have to do that. Um, yes, so. I mean, I think Nielsen is the guy I'm the highest on that nobody else is really talking about that much, but I really like the skill level and the playmaking, and I think the skating is, if you, there's a reasonable path to at least average skating strides. So, and the tracking data that I have on him is just, I think this is this is a good place for him. Hell yeah! Maybe. All right, Shearnick is next. He's he's on Cam's board. This is yeah. this is where super fast. Yeah, we pay super homage fast. to zoom, Cam, zoom. who we wish he played we had really well. I didn't like him before the World Juniors, but he played really well there. He used his teammates more, showed more than skating, and his space was really hard to handle. You, know, you mentioned Stenberg, and he was really good at the Five Nations, not as good at the World Juniors, but there's a lot there. Like, he he really has a lot of tools. I mean, I, I liked him I, in the little time I, I saw like him in one tournament. He just doesn't score. Right. Like, he has tools. He kind of works hard. He has smaller skills. Like, everything is pretty much there, but the finishing ability is not um i he's a second rounder middle somewhere um i think we're forgetting think some we ohlers put, and double we have to here. put mullendick down at 48 like i, I can't say are just crazy i can't sanction mullendick any lower than 48 who are the other uh, chlers here Barky, who are the other C- first Barky. sachin matthew mania cohen zemer callan lind okay so just put an entire chunk of like eight chl players <laughs> And maybe yes. like one or a guy between. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, it's Barky at fifty. I'm putting my foot down. Brustovich okay. at fifty one. I think I think that's a nice. Uh, Stenberg needs to be in here. Is is Stenberg better than Barky? Probably. Yes, Probably. He yeah. has better skills. Okay. Well, uh, Denver well, Barky is is got that Barky. dog in him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> we stand, Lauren. Um, yeah, I mean that's a, that's a Mitch joke from the beginning of the season, but <laughs> don't give um, him yeah, he, it. Jesus Christ, he, he plays like a Mitch. he he plays like a madman. Like he is just constant forecheck, physical, uh, gets in the dirty areas, like back and forth and back and forth, and he's just so fun to watch. Um, he has shown a little bit more offense than I think. I expected at the beginning of the season. Um, Easton Cowan's another guy that probably could end up being in this in the second round. But um, yeah, the two of them have some like crazy chemistry together when they're on the ice. It's like they're kind of just like this force. So... Yeah, he's amazing. And then that means Sachin has to go down because it's the same projection. Um, I just want to put one declaration down, and it's that we have to have Adar Suniev at yeah, 64. I agree. At 60 well, points, we, we, like, we should have him. We could put him down now. This. We could we put him down now, this. but like he Super has smart, to like. be on this board. Versus Zemer, though, like Zemer has more separating tools than Sunio does. Yeah, that's and, probably right. And I will defer the... to Daniel on this one. Who, who okay, is Z- Zemer, can you talk about him a bit? He's from the Cougar Town. Uh, uh, oh, that's David. nice. <laughs> well, that's you know, Zemer skating is uh, his ankles are stiff uh he has a very rounded back he doesn't extend <laughs> he just steps up the ice but um he gets by by using like pretty crazy individual tools like his he has he has some large ice mobile uh maneuverability a lot of small ice maneuverability he's kind of underutilized in his role he's like placed at the net instead of in a shooting position but he has a really crazy curl and drag wrister 
uh, can score from distances at the WHL level. But um, a lot of his gen- offensive generation is due to height, um, setting him up in good spots, tap-ins, that type of thing on the power play. Um, he's, he's mean. He's, he throws his body around. Uh, he's not overly big, but um, there, there's a lot of questions of whether he's going to be just a junior scorer or not just because of this, the stride. But, you know, he's, he's like, I think he's tied for fourth or fifth in scoring in the WHL. He's a bit older, so that's another factor. But um, there's individual tools there, and um, uh, so kind of random. But Lassie, can you give us an update on Jesse Kiskinen? I just had a light bulb go off, and I loved him at the the Hlenka. Haven't followed up, Mitch. I think you liked him as well. Um, Lassie, what, what do you think about him? Because I I was just I, I smiling. Oh, ear to ear every time he took the ice. Mm, I like him quite a bit. I think he has decent upside. The shoot, the shot is really, really impressive how he can release in tight and beat goalies. And his production is really good. The five on five data is not not quite as good as, as the point totals would suggest, but he could be a candidate to be at the end of the second round but I would probably have him more in the third round maybe I would have Lenny Hamanaho and Thomas Uronen both slightly ahead of him yeah I, I've have not watched thought. Finland a lot but it's not the best year I've seen unfortunately like just a few games yep. of many of the top guys so who but do I, I like it uh, Amino now I mean now yeah you got it uh, yep. Hemi Naho at, at 56. He's one of the best really off player players in the draft. Like, he's so smart with his positioning offensively. I don't know about yes. defensively, but like, he's always in the right spot. Like, he clearly anticipates the game like two moves ahead. It's just that he's not a great mover. Like, he's better at a standstill than skating. Yep. And what happened Indeed. to Cam Allen? I mean, the biggest issue at the beginning of the season was just he was making so many mistakes that were just so uncharacteristic of the player that he had been last season. I mean, he was just throwing wild pucks up the middle of the ice, um, losing coverage in front of the net, uh, getting beat off the rush really easily. Um, He sort of settled. He seems a little bit calmer now that he's kind of more focused on do taking it shift by shift instead of maybe, I mean, at the beginning of the season, he was playing like 30, 31 minutes a night. Um, and, and maybe he just felt like he had to do too much and do everything for Guelph. And then now it seems like he's a lot more settled. He knows what he has to do. Um, more flashes of offense. He's rushing the puck more breakouts are a lot cleaner, um, activating off the point, getting the inside, um, setting up his teammates, it's coming down from the point to finish off plays. Um, so he kind of looks again like the player he was last season. Obviously, from my perspective, it's only one really strong viewing compared to the beginning of the season where a lot of the viewings were a lot more questionable. Um, he's still taking a couple too many undisciplined penalties for my liking. Um, but I mean, I don't think we can torpedo him down the draft list this much further. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All then right. Let's, he could be. Let's put him he down. could easily make us look stupid. Like we could next meeting, we might have him way higher than Stop this. Then. He could be in the first round by the next meeting. Like it's just so variable. Yeah. Um, so fifty-seven. Uh, but... I have yeah. someone from the QMGHL. You want to hear it? It's Catterford. That's your. Yeah, he's actually pretty good. Like he's probably a bottom line, bottom six projection, but his tools are NHL projectable all around. He gets inside, attacks the net, and he's really good at just bouncing the puck to teammate. Like he, a bit like Gauthier, but a lesser version. He just the puck, he moves it really fast to a teammate, attacks the right areas. He, I think he's projectable defensively too. So that's his range. Okay. okay. Matthew Mania time. Matthew Mania. It's time for Matthew sure. Mania. Sure. I mean, like, he's just chaos on the ice, and it's really fun. It's so fun. Oh, shit. That's <laughs> I've, his you've actual watched name? A... I, th- oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we just had, like, so, a sequence of no, Matthews lined so, up. <laughs> Mitch has watched him way more than I have. I only started watching recently, but um, he's looked really fun. I mean, risk, risk is just, there's a lot of risk with this game. Um, 
prone to defensive mistakes, but um, probably the most offensively dynamic blue liner in the OHL class. So yeah, he's just doing stuff all the time, creating advantages, joining the play, very physically aggressive defensively to the point where he just chases guys around with the point of inflicting pain upon them. Um, very interesting projection and the tools are great. So yeah, he, he could be a riser as well, especially with the way Sudbury's been playing lately. They've really seemed to turn a corner with the new coach. And we have three more. Um, so Aronin, oh. Aronin is on Lassie's. It's fine. Wait, if we're ranking three goalies, are should we just not rank sixty-four skaters yeah. then? Lauren, That's probably true. That's probably the safe bet. Yeah, we because salute we you for being like the smartest person to, to actually clue into that. So, <laughs> um, I don't know if we have three goalies. Um, we at least have two. Let's get sixty-two. Let's get sixty-two. Let's at least because I know we're going to have two goalies, Barry Meno. So let's get yeah. let's get one more skater in there. Uh, Ronan, I I've seen. I, I thought he was strong. I would getting... sanction. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I like him. All right, so we did it. We we made it forward.